Hi. Today we're going to take a look at line integrals, uh, specifically line integrals that move through what are known as conservative vector fields. So let's just remember what a vector field is. Here's our xy plane. And suppose we have um, little vectors placed all over the plane. And what these vectors are telling us is if we were to stand at that particular location, then that's sort of the force we would experience and the direction in which we would experience it. So a shorter vector means there's less force, a longer vector means there's more force, and you have some kind of direction you're moving. Now, additionally, let's say we're going to start at a particular point. I'll make this my starting point. And over here is my ending point, so I'll call them S and E for start and end. And you can tell you can go between these two points in many different paths. So maybe you might do something like this. Right? So that's possible. Another possibility could be maybe you decide to take something a little bit more direct. Okay. Or, you know, there, well, you could just start to get creative. You can do something wiggly like this, maybe. It doesn't matter. If the vector field we're moving through is conservative, so that means that vector field is path independent. So if you took the green path, or if you took the purple path in the middle, or you took this purple dotted path, it wouldn't matter. The same amount of work would be done to you by the vector field as you move through it. If the, when you're done with this line, it's positive. It means the vector field sort of helped you along the way more than it hurt you, more than it impeded you, we'll say. If the vector field, if the line integral turns to be negative when you're done, that means that the vector field did work to you and it kind of inhibited your your uh, inhibited you more than helped you as it moved along this path from S to E. All right, so I'm going to look now as I'm going to look at two particular examples. You find examples like this in multivariable te textbooks all the time. So suppose we have a line integral written like this, tangent y dx plus x secant squared y dy. And the question is, what's the amount of work or sh or something like this? Uh, suppose C is any path from, we're going to move from 1, 0 to 2, 4. So the way this problem is sort of stated there they're not even telling us specifically what this path is. So this is not the picture that goes to this vector field, but you can see we have three different paths we could be taking uh, between the points S and E, and this problem is giving us a lot of freedom. So the directions specifically are show this integral is independent of path. Okay, so what we have to do then is take a look here and here and realize that that's our vector field. Our vector field f of x comma y is equal to uh, tangent y times i plus x secant squared y times j. And if you want to show that the line integral is independent of path, then what we need to show is this. Show that this vector field f of x, y is equal to the gradient of f, where f is a scalar function, and that's important. So it's a scalar function. Just in case you forgot what that is, that means it's a function that might have two or more variables in it, but it returns back to you a single number, a number in the reals. All right, and the gradient vector um, means you take the, the partial derivatives of that function. So I'm going to show you how this works here. I want to look at this first thing and remember that that should be partial f, partial x, and this part should be partial f partial y. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say f of x comma y. Well, if the derivative of this thing with respect to x has to be tangent y, then it must have an x tangent y in it. The reason why is if you took the derivative of x tangent y, and if x is the variable, tangent y is just a constant, and the derivative would just be tangent y, just like the derivative of 5x is just 5. Okay, um, what I usually like to do now is look at the other piece and ask myself, if I took the derivative of what I have already, would I get it? Um, 
and it turns out that's true. So we take df dy of this thing down here, x is just a coefficient on tangent, so we just leave it there like a number. The root of tangent y is secant squared. So there you are. This can't this thing here just shown is a scalar function, and the gradient of this function is equal to our vector field f of x comma y. And so if that's true, then the vector field conservative and evaluating this line integral is not difficult at all. So there's our line integral up there. Okay. So let me just copy that for a second and take it to a new page. I've written so much on here. So let me just copy this thing. I probably have a few extra things I don't want, but that's all right. I'll just erase them on the next page. Let's go here. Let's paste it. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's get off that. Let's erase this thing. Okay, so remember, we showed already what the scalar function is. f of x comma y is equal to x tangent y. And since it's independent of path, all you need to do is find f of the endpoint. So we're ending here, and we're starting here. So you do f of 2 comma pi over 4 minus f of 1 comma 0. So let's do that. So f of 2 comma pi over 4, this piece would be 2 tangent pi over 4. Over here, we do f of 1, 0. So that would be minus 1 times the tangents of 0. And then the tangent of 0 is just 0, so that goes away. Um, this piece over here, is 2 times the tangent pi of 4 is really just 1. So the answer to this line integral is just 2. All right. So I was kind of being clever here. I was using the fact that, you know, the problem sort of gave me this freedom. They're sort of saying any path between these points. They were implying this line integrals, uh, this vector field's conservative. Let's pretend um, you decided instead, or you didn't notice what I did, and you just decided, you know what, I'm just going to find a line segment between these points. So let's go do that. So 1, 0, and 2 pi over 4. So let's do that. So we've got the point 1, 0, and 2 comma pi over 4. A line segment between them, r of t. You just take the first point as your starting vector, plus some scalar t times a direction vector. And to get a direction vector is easy. You just subtract the x's and subtract the y's. So to go from 1 to 2, I'm going this way. I must have gone up 1. And to go from 0 to pi over 4, I went up pi over 4. So if I want, I can write this as x equals 1 plus t. That's from here and here. And I can do y equals 0 plus pi over 4 t. So just pi over 4 times t. OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in all this stuff. I'm going to plug in this stuff. Oh, and by the way, my domain is just going to be from 0 to 1. Because if I add this whole vector, I would land at the second point. OK, so I'm going to write this line integral 0 to 1. And it was originally tangent y dx plus x secant squared y dy. All right, so I'm going to plug those things in and see what happens. Let's do that. So integral 0 to 1, instead of writing tangent y, I'm going to write tangent of pi over 4 times t. dx means the derivative of the x term, but the derivative of the x term here is just 1 dt, so that's going to be dt. All right, and then you're going to have plus over here, x. And x is just, if we're careful, x is 1 plus t. And then you're going to have secant squared of whatever y was, which was pi over 4 times t. And then dt. OK. Now, here's what you would have to do. And I'm going to pause here because I'm looking at this, and I don't really want to do it. I think this first part's not so bad. Um, 
you can just use a u substitution there. You'd be fine, but then you got to deal with tangent. And tangent, you got to be clever with to get the antiderivative of that. I'll give you a hint if you wanted to compute that by hand. Think of tangent as sine of something over the cosine of something. And then think about a u substitution where you let u be the denominator. And you can get an ln of something. Over here on the right, you've got a function of t times a function of t. Look, you've got 1 plus t times secant squared of something with the t in it. That's going to be an integration by parts. I mean, this is starting to look questionable. So you can see now, I just want to show you, you could set this up. If this had looked easy to do, then we could do it. But you could see the advantage here of realizing that this was a conservative vector field because it had the property that vector field was the gradient of some scalar function. And then it was as simple as just evaluating the scalar function at the endpoints and subtracting them. So that was pretty nice. All right, let's take a look at uh, one more example. So suppose you had a problem that looked like, like this maybe. Suppose we give you f of x comma y is equal to 2y to the 3 halves i plus 3x y to the 1 half j. And the first point we're going to start at is 1, 1. And we're going to go to another point, uh, 2, 4. And so what I'm going to suggest is if we've got to find the work and we go from one point to the other, then not giving us a path, it's probably a conservative vector field. If it was path dependent, we would need to know it because depending on a path, we'd get a different answer. So the question is, can we look at this and figure out some scalar function f of x, y that would have this thing as a gradient? So this piece here, remember the first piece is always uh, partial f, partial x. So if that's going to be true, this thing must have a 2xy to the 3 halves in it. Okay. Now, if we look at this piece, if we were to just take the derivative of this thing I just underlined in green with respect to y, you would get, watch, ready? You get 3 halves times 2xy to the 1 half. And then these just, these cancel and become a 3. You would get exactly that piece. So this is it. This is your scalar function. And so now if you want to find a line integral, uh, that crazy, you know, we could write this out. We could say 2y to the 3 halves dx plus 3xy to the 1 half dy um, along the path, any path that goes from p to q. What we know now is we can simply just take our endpoints here Let's, uh, I'm going to use the color green here. This endpoint and this endpoint, plug them into that scalar function and subtract. So our answer to this integral is simply um, f of the point 2, 4 minus, sorry, f of the point 1, 0. A little lag in the pen. So, just in case we forgot, that scalar function is 2xy to the 3 halves. So 2x y to the 3 halves minus 2x y to the 3 halves. And so what do we have here? This would be 4 times 4 to the 3 halves is really 8. It's the square root of 4 is 2, and then cubed is going to be 8. And then you have minus 1 to the 3 halves is just 1, times 1 times 2 is 2. So 32 minus 2 are just 30. So this would be another example. If you wanted to, you can go find the line segment between the two points, the line segment between the point 4, 2, and 1, 1, and write out something crazy, which might end up looking like this crazy one did. But I think we've shown here uh, that's not the way to go if you can figure out a scalar function. Okay, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching.